Hey guys, welcome back to Great Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are camped right outside of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. We're gonna explore the area, so stick around. So this has been a beautiful spot to camp. We're actually on a sub peak of Walton Peak at an elevation of 10,142 feet. It's beautiful up here. We've got views in every direction. Uh, there is a campfire ban in place, uh, but ironically enough, we have probably the world's biggest campfire about seven and a half miles away. Now we've been watching it very carefully. The Route National Forest officials have just today expanded the forest closure area because the fire literally doubled in size yesterday in the course of one day. It's now almost 10,000 acres. It's known as the Silver Creek Fire. However, we've been watching it very carefully. The winds have been consistently and are predicted to be consistently out of the southwest. And we are actually north northwest of the area that's burning. Uh, it's keeping the smoke away from us too. So it's actually been, in a, in, a, in a way, kind of a good spot to be. It's been a pretty spectacular view. There have been a lot of folks actually coming up here to get a view of the fire from town by coming up here where you can get a good overview. about 30 minutes from and about 4,000 feet of elevation above the town of Steamboat Springs, a ski resort town in winter and a vibrant tourist community in summer. The ski slopes on Mount Warner overlook just about every spot in town. The smoke plume from the Silver Creek fire appears to billow from the summit of Mount Warner, just like a volcano. Once a ranching community, Steamboat has carefully preserved its cowboy flair. And despite ample tourism development, Steamboat is still surrounded on all sides by sprawling ranch lands. So one of the things we wanted to do while we're here in Steamboat Springs was go check out the Strawberry Park Hot Springs. Privately owned Strawberry Park Hot Springs is a truly unique experience in the hot spring world. Spring-fed, rock-walled pools are lined with a sandy bottom. While we film the springs during the day, we return to soak at night when there's barely any light at the springs in order to facilitate stargazing as you soak you actually need to bring a headlamp to see where you're going.
While we were out sightseeing today, the Silver Creek fire has just continued to grow and the whole region remains under a red flag warning. We'll have to carefully keep an eye on its progress for just a slight change in wind could easily send the flames in our direction. For now though, we'll enjoy our fresh, clean air above camp. Now, before we go any further with this episode, I owe you guys an explanation. When we went to the hot springs last night, I swapped to my low light lens on my Sony Alpha 6500 in hopes that I could film last night for you. It just turned out to be too dark. However, unwittingly, I introduced some dust to the camera's sensor. This is my workhorse camera. This is the one I do almost all my filming with. As a result, in the rest of this episode, the majority of the shots have some spots in them. It's embarrassing. It really is embarrassing. It's a rookie maneuver on my part. I am seriously sorry, guys. I hope you'll be patient with me and tolerate the spots. I just haven't got the heart to throw away the footage. Well, I have planned on bringing you biking with me at Steamboat today, maybe even getting a little drone footage around camp, but you can see what happened overnight. The wind shifted slightly and now we've been inundated with the smoke from the Silver Creek fire here at our mountaintop campsite. So it's time to move on. Uh, we could look for something else in the Steamboat Springs area, but I think that rather than do that, as long as we're gonna move, we're really gonna move. So we'll hit the road and see what we can find to continue this episode in another location. Traumatized by choking wildfire smoke at camp, we sped away from Steamboat with the Silver Creek fire in our rearview mirror. In fact, we didn't stop until after we crossed the line into another state. So welcome to Wyoming where it's always windy. Uh, we escaped the smoke, we got the wind instead. Still, I'll take the wind over the smoke any day. We're in Medicine Bow National Forest in the Laramie Mountains, just east of Laramie. Uh, this has been a wonderful sight for us, beautiful views. We got this gorgeous rock outcropping right outside of camp.
There's our nemesis, the Silver Creek Fire in the distance. There are seemingly limitless boondocking sites up here in the Laramie Mountains, some like this one with views stretching out over the Laramie Plains. There are a couple of monuments up here that we want to visit. The first one, recognizing the Ames brothers, Oliver and Oaks, financiers of the Union Pacific Railroad. It was near here that the highest point on the first transcontinental railroad was reached, and the railroad erected this pyramid here in their honor. The other is a huge bust of our nation's 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. For after all, I-80 through here is part of the historic Lincoln Highway. So let's head into Laramie, check out the Wyoming Territorial Prison that once housed Butch Cassidy himself. Built in 1872, the Wyoming Territorial Prison is one of the oldest buildings still standing in the state. It operated as a federal penitentiary from 1872 to 1890, when Wyoming became a state, and thereafter as a state prison until 1901, when prisoners were transferred to a new state facility in Rollins. Following its restoration, today the prison serves as a Wyoming State Historic Site. Self-guided tours begin here, in the Warden's House, maintained in period de corps. From there, tours continue into the main penitentiary. Prison rules include a complete prohibition on conversation amongst prisoners. Still, you could smoke a chewed tobacco, as long as you used a spittoon. The prison's best known inmate was the Western outlaw Butch Cassidy, who was incarcerated here from 1894 to 1896. Western lore has idolized Cassidy and his Wild Bunch gang for a robbery spree across much of the Western U.S. Still, the museum has illustrated the profiles of many of the prison's other residents, both male and female, locked up for crimes ranging from murder to selling liquor without first paying the required tax. Prison labor meant anything from building the warden's house to making straw brooms for the prison industry, the Laramie Broom Company. Well, that was a really cool tour. Uh, 
The Wyoming State Territorial Prison is an excellent stop if you're camping in the area or even if you're just driving by on I-80. It's well worth the $5 price of admission. And while you're there, you can dump your tanks for an additional $10. Although judging by this line, you might be waiting for a while on a Sunday. So this is day three of the wind and it's time to try to leave the wind behind. We're gonna head northwest across the state of Wyoming toward the Jackson area. So if you're not yet one of our grand adventurers, hit that subscribe button so you can make sure that you come along on each grand adventure and ring that notification bell so you get instant notification of each new episode of Grand Adventure. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. And as always, we'd love to receive your questions and feedback in the comment section down below this video. And until next time, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you soon.